Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No one knows what 2021 has in store for us. But just as the Lord took us through 2020, you know the Lord will carry us through 2021. Amen. Can we worship the faithful God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly, I just want to take a moment to welcome our brethren from Yalas. Praise the Lord for them, brethren. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Also want to welcome our brethren from overseas. Anthony and Max, Sister Maxine, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So happy that we all can together in this for, forum so far and yet so close in Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And all our visitors, we don't have any. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, we have a special word um, from our evangelist, Evangelist Darwin Price. And I pray that we will just pray him up, brethren, as he comes to do, to lay upon his, to put before us what God has laid on his heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so without further ado, brethren, I present to you Evangelist Christ in Jesus' name. Pray that the Lord will truly bless him. And I pray that we will be attentive. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise the highest praise. For, for he alone is worthy of all praise and glory. The, 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 the elders were around the throne of God and they in recognition in, 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 in realization as they must have gone through um, a million times in the kingdom of God they come to the realization once again that yes this God whom we serve is the true and living God and the scripture says that they threw down their crowns before him to and bowed in obedience to him and said thou art worthy O God you alone are God and worthy to be praised. And the angels around the throne of God give God praise and worship. And uh, we, we read a psalm yesterday that talks about how the heavens give God praise and worship. Even the rocks and the trees in, in, in acting on behalf of the word of God give God praise and worship. Everything gives God praise and worship. And you know, we as the as as the children of God have a wonderful opportunity that we give God praise and worship out of understanding of this of the type of God we serve. We understand who He is. We understand His goodness, and it is out of that we give God praise and worship. And we give and I give God thanks for that knowledge of salvation. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the Lord. I greet one and all in no other name but the precious the wonderful the excellent name of our lord and savior jesus christ i greet our pastor um pastor the seal and his family our deacon deacon the seal deacon brown and his family and all the church bridging as 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 we had greeted before i'm giving that thanks for um all of our bridging from yellows joining us and from foreign and all of those thank you for for being with us um, tonight I don't plan to be long because there's really one concept that I want to put in our minds and to, to begin, um, I'm going to ask us to turn our scriptures to Luke 13 and I'll be reading from six to nine. And Romans chapter 2, read verse 4. I'll read. Please follow. Okay. It says, He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. 
Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig it about and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after thou shall cut it down. Romans 2 verse 4 says, Or despisest thou the riches of, of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. As I said, I don't plan to be long because it's um, one concept that I really want to bring out. And um, before I go to that, I'm going to preface the message with a scripture that our sister read yesterday in our evening service. Sister Crystal read the scripture in, in John 15. John 15, um, verse it and, it and it says herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so that ye be so shall ye be my disciples now when sister crystal mentioned the scripture her her point was to remind us that god is glorified by us bearing fruit for him and that's, uh, that's a key in component to being a child of God. We are concerned with glorifying God. We are concerned, it is, it is something that is on our minds. How should we glorify God? And the truth is, it's unique to us as children of God because the world out there is more concerned about how can they glorify themselves. How can they better themselves? How can they elevate themselves? But we as children of God, we concern ourselves with how do we glorify God? And the truth of the matter is, that is how it should be for every human being. As scripture says in, 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 in Revelation, all things were created by you, O Lord, and for your pleasure were they created. Every single human being, every single person that ever existed was created for the pleasure, to the glory of God. As song sings, we were created to worship. As human beings, we were created for God's glory. But the fact of the matter is, many persons simply do not care about that. Many persons... Um, that's not a priority for them, but that's a problem because the fact of the matter is, and this is the general concept that I want to remind us today about, is that God has expectations of us. God has expectations of every single person who ever existed. He's not a God who is, you know, far away from us, like some, 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 some distant being just looking down on us and, and, and just seeing how we live. He's a God that is right there. He cares about you. He cares about how you live your life. And he has expectations. He, he expects you to live a certain way. He's not a distant God or, or probably like a God you just say is, is, is just, a, just a, somebody who just rewards, rewards you for doing good. So, you know, you have some people who kind of think of God as somebody who is, you know, you do good and you get something from him. You do bad, you might get something from him, but nothing, nothing more than that. No more personal relation, no more closeness. Just, that's just a God is like a, like a vending machine. But our God, is a near God who has expectations of our lives. In the, in the, in the parable that Jesus mentioned, Luke, Luke 30, it, 
it speaks of a man who who is walking around in it in his in his garden and he sees a fig tree that he had planted so long ago and he comes to this fig tree and the scripture says three years later expecting some fruit expecting something to bear and and at the end of the day after three years he said but not now bear no fruit, not, 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 not coming from this fig tree. I can imagine that God looks on, on some people's life, or oh God forbid, but God looks on some people's life and say, but <laughs> what about this person? You know, I, they had prayed for some mercy. They had prayed for something from me and I gave it to them. And, and they look on Jesus and say, but okay, what, what happened to, to this person who, who we had blessed some time ago? We had answered this prayer. We had given this grace. What, what, what's coming from them? And then to hear the, 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 Jesus turn to him and say, but nothing. I mean, them did start pray some time ago. Or them did visit church two times. But other from that, nothing else. Nothing else has come from that life. And what, what God says to, to, to Jesus is, is, is the striking thing. He said, but look. I have blessed, I have, I have, I've nurtured this tree for so long. And after three years, that's what three different seasons, eh? Even if you're a type of tree or only bear once a year, you'd expect to get fruit at least once a year. But this tree didn't bear fruit not yet once. Why come the, the ground any longer? Cut it down. And, and, and Jesus' reply says, well, well, you know, well, <laughs> give it one more year. Give it one more year. The thing about it is God expected some fruit. And it's not unreasonable for God to expect fruit from people. He's the creator of us. He's the one who gives us life. He's the one who, is, who has blessed us. He's the one who carries us through. I think about this message because I think about how God has carried us through the year 2020. How many blessings, and how many mercies he has afforded unto us. But we should not think that God has blessed us and granted us his mercy with no expectation. He gives us these mercies and blesses us with an understanding that, yes, he's a loving God. He gives us because he loves us, but he gives us also with an expectation that we're going to turn around and bear fruit. And if Amen. a person is out there after getting receiving the goodness of God, don't bear no fruit. Then the warning to us, the warning to that person is that hey, God, God have a time. God have a time. It, 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 you know, you, you think about somebody in a in a in a restaurant, you know, they're there waiting for their food. You know, there's a time when they're going to look on them watch and I wonder what happened. You know, I, 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 I met my art a long time. I, I, I do what I'm supposed to do a long time. What happened now? God, God look on them watch, Bridget. God look on no. them watch. No. And look on, look on mankind and look on um, the goodness that's done on us and look on them watch and I'm wondering, but wait, you know, what going to happen to this? What, what, am I not going to get anything from this? Are they, are, is, is the person going to turn? Are we going to bear fruit? God have expectations. And, they're un, and it's not unreasonable for God to have expectations, Bridget. Amen? It's, it's, it's not unreasonable Amen. for God to have expectations. I mean, if, you, if we put our perspective in the, in the in our perspective of God, if you think about it, he's the one who created us. He's the one who gives us life. And he expects us to turn around and recognize him as God. The scripture says the fool said in his heart, there is no God. What, what must God do with somebody who he has created? And him now function, him now do what I'm supposed to do. Him not, him not doing what he was created for. What would, you, what would you do if you had a, had a phone? 
smartphone and the smartphone looked nice and pretty, but the phone can't make no call. And all you do with it, all you try to do with it, it just, it just can't make no call. You, have, you probably wonder if you drop it in a water, so you put it in a, you put it in what them say, you put it in a rice to try to dry up the water. Mm, yeah, or, or you take it to a, you take it to a phone repair place and you hope so well you know you you repair it after a while and it might get better but after that it it's still not in the car no matter how much you like the phone no matter who give the phone after a while you either got dash it where you put it down because the phone have a purpose and if it now fulfill the purpose then what is the purpose of the phone so god god has expectation of all of mankind that you know, that he expects us to produce fruit. And the, the other scripture that I read in, in Romans says something very interesting. Romans chapter two, it says, verse four, or despite us though the riches of, of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God lead thee to repentance. Is the last part that, that I find so interesting. Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. In other words, one of the reasons why God is so merciful unto us, and especially those who, who aren't saved, is to make you understand the type of God he is. The goodness of God, in part, if is to lead us to repentance, to make you understand and say, look, this God is trustworthy. So, so, you, so you prayed and you asked God for something and, and God answered your prayer. What he's showing us is that, look, if you can trust me for this one thing, trust me with your life. If, 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 if you can pray to me and I can show you mercy, I can show you goodness, then understand, say, look, if you were to commit your life to me, I'll have your back. Praise be to God. That's, that's, that is the God we serve. His goodness is to show us that we can trust him more and more. Amen. Amen. And, as, and especially as children of God, we, we get that every day. God shows us that, look, we can trust him even more with our life. So he carries us to a trial, right? He carries us, he carries us to, to a situation and we learn to lean on him. And in leaning on him, we realize that, yeah, we really can trust God. And so he carries us even to a bigger trial. I, I'm reminded of, of, of Deacon Jones's testimony where he says that after working for three months, you know, there's a series of time, three months, where he wasn't getting paid. And yet, God carried him through that. And yeah. then there was another time in the future. Six months, bro. Where, where, where it's six months this time, not just three months, six months. I look at that, you know, if they ever realize how much of a powerful testimony that is, because I think of myself, I don't know how long I could last with two months. But that shows me and it shows us that God, if God can carry you through three months, the same God can carry you through six months. The same God can carry you through one year. The same God can carry you through two years. Amen, amen. The goodness God. of God shows us that, that he is trustworthy. Yeah. And the thing about it is he expects us to act on that trustworthiness. He doesn't just show us this goodness for us to, 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 to say yes, praise God, and just forget. One of the, one of the most interesting songs is a song where, where it basically was saying, how many times must I prove to you I love you? How many times must God show us his goodness for us to come to Amen. a point in our hearts and our minds to just know, so, you know, so God have you back. Even though, even though we might go through some situations in life God has an expectation of us that we're going to trust him. Even if God were to carry you through something rough, we, we, God has an expectation that we'll be like Job and say, 
Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Notice my word. He has an expectation that that is how I respond. Yeah. And, and even specifically now, for the child of God, God has an expectation of us. Look, I preach and I, and I can testify of the mercies of God. Our God is merciful. Mercy is renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. But even in our lives, we must realize as children of God that God have expectations also. He doesn't expect us to be at the same position every time. He doesn't, have an, he doesn't expect us to, 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 as a tree, to only bear certain amount of fruit and no more. Or even that, as we see in the parable, not bear any fruit at all. God expects fruit from his people. In the same, in the same John chapter 15, you can just go up to verse 2. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth much, bring forth more fruit. Is it is a branch that he taketh away is the concerning thought in our brethren. That's the thing that is that is in the back of my mind that 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 kind of troubles you, and it should. Our God is merciful, but our God expects fruit. He expects something from us. He expects some return. He expects some increase. He is merciful and he does, he does stay with us. Praise be to God. He does work with us. He, he carries us along. As a father carrying a little child who probably can barely walk, he carries us along. Praise God for that. But he expects progress. He doesn't expect us to, to, to be in the same rut all the time. There is a limit. There is a, there's a point. It, I don't know how far it is, and I'm not going to try to define that tonight. I just know say, I don't want to reach it. I don't want to reach the point where... God is saying, you know what? Enough. God forbid that any of anybody reach that point. As I said, I don't know how far it is, but I know it exists and I don't want to know, I don't want to get close to it. But I have to put it in our minds that there is a point. Another scripture says, God will not strive with man forever. God expects us to progress, to grow, to bear fruit. And as children of God, we have to, I want us to, as we especially enter into 2021, looking back on the goodness of God, I want us to, to, to then look into ourselves and ask the question, now that I know, now that I've seen God's goodness, what am I going to do about it? One of the things that is most propelling or should be most motivating for us is just the goodness of God. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not boasting, please don't think that, but one of the things that motivated me to, to evangelize is, is like, I just come to the realization that, you know, this God is so good. You know, what can I, what can I render? What can I do in, in a response to the goodness of God? And, and you know, I, I, it, it was just, it just seemed like it was such a small thing to say, well, I mean, probably I can preach or you tell people about Jesus. That's the type of heart that God wants from us, you know. He wants a heart that so recognizes the goodness of God that it, it is moved into action. We don't, God does not have to tell we, because God already writes him word. He already writes him scriptures. His will is evident to us. You know, for example, we, all of we can read Matthew 24, where it says, go you out into the world and preach the gospel. We know what God wants from us. So if God wants us to know, take the instruction that he has given forth and be moved to go forth and do something about it. 
And as I said, God is merciful. It, it's not like God are going to necessarily just force you and dip on you and say, well, go do this, go do this. But understand and, and, and appreciate that God does have expectations of every single one of us. He does want something. He does expect that the life that he pours in, the blessings that he has poured in to us will come to something. It is not for us to just settle and not move, not do anything about it. And it definitely, and this is a message to me too, it's definitely not for us to be stuck in a rut with the same old faults and the same old challenges. It's not, it's not, that's not. God's expectation, God's expectation. God is pouring his mercy into us because his, his power is an overcoming power. His spirit is an overcoming spirit. And we have our faults and our challenges, but progress, some movement forward is expected. And so my, my, my simple, humble, Reminder, especially if you will, if you allow, as we enter into this new year, is, is to be mindful that God has an expectation of us. He is nurturing the tree, digging the tree, blessing the tree with an expectation that fruit will bear. And that's not unreasonable. As a matter of fact, my final verse is well known. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Our brother Paul reminds us, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God's expectations are reasonable, are good, and he does have them. So may the spirit of God strengthen us, Virgin. May we, if we need to pick up back our bootstraps and get back up and dust ourselves off. And as we go forward, let's ask the hard question of ourselves. I know that God expects something from me. What shall I render? What am I going to show to God? How is my life going to show the fruits that God deserves from my life? These are my few words to you in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Praise Bless the Lord. Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. What a word. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Powerful word to begin 2021. God has expectations. Amen. Amen. And you know, we don't want to keep disappointing God or to disappoint him at all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We really want to move past whatever faults we have. We really want to move into whatever purpose God has for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I feel that God has sent this word for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. A time when the world needs to hear about him. And you know, who better to use than us, his people. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. And so I want to thank the Lord for using Brother Garvin, for laying that word upon his heart. And I don't want that, you know, we, we just... Forget about it. Amen. I want to really ponder that word and pray that the Lord will truly help us to bear fruit, not to stretch out the time and every year he looks and there's nothing. Amen. But even from the church, because the word of God first comes to his people. Amen. And so, you know, let us look into our lives and see what is it that God would have me do. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That you know we really need to work upon. We thank the Lord for that word and pray that you know as we step into 2021, 
That will be our theme. Pleasing God. Fulfilling his expectation. Amen. Praise, Amen. The, Lord. Praise the Lord. 